Hi, I'm Thomas and I believe that creativity is a learnable skill and my evidence to support this will be the following. So our first protocol on this whole creativity is a skill journey is to Mr. George Harrison here. Uh, when the Rolling Stones magazine um, ranked the greatest guitarists of all time, they placed Babyface George here as number 11. Number 11 out of the greatest guitarists of all time. Um, now that achievement is made all the more impressive when you consider George's beginnings. For example, uh, I'm about to read an excerpt uh, from Philip Norman's Shout. Learning to play. Even the first simple chords in the tuition book was an agonizing process for George. All he had was his indomitable will to learn. His mother encouraged him, sitting up late with him as he tried and tried. Sometimes he would be near to tears with frustration and the pain of split and dusty fingertips. Now that doesn't sound like George was particularly talented. That sounded like he was... It was, it was a painful process for him to learn, that it was all he had was his indomitable will to learn. And his indomitable will took him all the way to number 11 in the greatest guitarist of all time. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to Carol Dweck's book, Mindset, uh, more specifically on page... 69 uh, there's a series of drawings here and um, these are the drawings of a student students of author betty edwards and um, now what they are they're self-portraits uh, so the the attempt on the left is the students uh, their drawings on their first day of class and the attempt on the right is the students drawings uh, five days later completing the class and um, and you know you can see yourself that the contrast is huge like the ability and the skill level is just grown immensely uh, over the five days and it just goes to show that you know this is great proof that uh, drawing uh, is not necessarily something you're born with that it's something you can learn that it is a skill In 1962, David Bowie formed his first band at the age of 15. Then, between the, the years 1964 and 1968, David Bowie released nine singles. Nine singles which failed to make it to the charts. But all the while, David Bowie is experimenting, he's trying new things, he's trying new genres, he's playing with different bands, he's experimenting, I've already said that. Um, and then finally, in 1969, David Bowie finds a hit in Space Oddity. He finally aligned what he liked to produce music-wise with uh, what his audience wanted to hear. Um, so my question is, if David Bowie was extremely talented and naturally gifted, why did it take him so long to find a hit? Why did it take him so long to resonate with his audience? Why did he spend so much time in obscurity? Jackson Pollock is synonymous with drip painting. You can't talk about drip painting without mentioning <coughs> Jackson Pollock. Any artist who produces a drip painting these days is inevitably setting, them up, setting themselves up for comparison with Jackson Pollock. At the peak of his drip painting phase, his art was selling for hundreds of millions of dollars and Life magazine proclaimed him the greatest living painter in the United States. But enough about Pollock. Let's talk about something completely different. I was a door-to-door -door salesman for roughly a month and one of the one of the highlights of my door-to-door -door salesman career uh, was that we had motivation sessions and the boss came in and he told us about growing bamboo so uh, apparently uh, with bamboo shoots the growth is marginal after the first four years right and um, it might you know it might stay that height for four years straight, right? At the end of year four, it look exactly like it did at the end of year one. But then in year five, it grows exponentially. What might've been just a few centimeters tall 
would be meter stop. I have no idea if this is true. It sounded cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so then our boss turns to us after this, you know, surprising us all with this insight that might not be true, might be true, might not be. Um, and he said, and he asked the question, how long did it take for the bamboo to grow to its total height? One year or five years? Now, back to art. Jackson Pollock was 35 years old when his drip painting phase began. He had been painting for decades before his drip phase. I myself could find 35 paintings that predate his drip phase on the internet. And those were just the ones I could find. You know, I'd say his real amount of paintings before the drip phase was in its hundreds, right? So the question is, how long did it take for Jackson Pollock to become a worldwide star? The time between his last non-drip painting and his first drip painting or 35 years? If you ask me, I think the success of Jackson Pollock is down to his persistence and his choice to be different. Two things have nothing to do with talent, two things that are choices, two things that anyone can do, two things that anyone can develop as a skill. Some people will say that they are not creative. And to these people, I think you might be using the wrong phrase. To these people, I would ask the question, do you really believe that if you invested all the time and effort in the world, you wouldn't get even a tiny bit better? I think it's more accurate to say, I know I would get better at this, but I'm not willing to invest the time. Which is absolutely fair enough, you know? Life is short enough that as, as it is, if you don't want to spend your free time trying to get better at being creative, then that's absolutely fair enough. You know, you do you, right? Um, life is too short as it is. Um, but let's just be clear on the phrasing. Because if you do want to get better at being creative, there's plenty of proof that you can do it. I hope this helps uh, and I hope you have a great day.